For today's quiz, I have a basketball and it's inflated and it bounces pretty well. What we'd like to know is if I compare an inflated versus a deflated, that is an elastic collision versus an inelastic, where it would more or less splat, which one would have a greater collision time? And when we're talking about collision time, I have a force sensor here that will allow us to measure the time the ball is impacting the ground. In this case, it'll be the force sensor. Here's what your quiz looks like for today. As always, mark your answer as completely as possible, and then let us know your confidence. Is it a zero, five, 10, 15, or 20? Think of that as being, would you put $20 on your answer, or would you put no money on that answer? Think of that as being your confidence. Typical student responses are three. The first is, if I'm always dropping it from a set height, which I am, I have this bar right here, I can put the ball to the bottom and that way I ensure I drop it from the same height every time. They'll say if a basketball is filled or if a basketball is deflated, it's going to have the same impact time. Others will say no, if a ball is deflated and it's splatting into the ground, it's going to take more time. It's going to deform around the sensor uh, before it bounces up probably just a little bit. Others will say no, a ball that bounces is going to be impacting the ground, it's going to come to a rest, and then it's going to have to come all the way back up. That's going to take more time. In this case, all three answers seem plausible. We'll find out which it actually is. To help us collect data, we're going to be using Vernier software. We have a force plate connected to an interfacing box, but we're going to be demanding an awful lot out of this. Think about this, when the ball comes down and impacts that force plate, it's gonna be very, very quick. We're gonna end up using the highest sampling rate that we can. I have this at 2,500 samples per second. Now I can only do that if I only go for about a half a second. After that, the machine, the program can't handle it, it locks up and I can't get data. So this is an important uh, lesson whenever you're doing empirical work. Get what you can get. On our system, this is what we can get. I would like to take that to 10,000 samples per second, but I can't. So I'm gonna use what I can. I just have to do this rather quickly. I'll hit collect and I'll drop this within a half a second and hopefully on here we'll be able to collect it. I'll do this five times. Not on camera, I'll just do it once. I missed it. Let me do it again. I'll get it ready, I have to go a little quicker. There, there's my first bounce, and that's what I'm after. What I'll do now, and I can just use my mouse for this, I'll end up putting it right at the beginning, and we can see we have 0 0.206 seconds. I'll then go to uh, the end of the impact, which is gonna be over here. Let me see if I can get it right there. 0 0.2200 seconds. I can also end up getting my peak. We might be able to use that later. By the way, I'll download all of the uh, data off here and I can end up uh, finding the peak, which is about 607. So let me do this five times off camera. We'll deflate the ball, repeat that, and then we can analyze. All right, I'm on my last run for the nearly completely deflated ball. I mean, if you indent this in, it barely comes back out. So when this hits the scale, it really just splats. So let me get this final run right here. I'll put this up and I'm right-handed, so left-handed's a little tough. So I hit collect, drop, and there we go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll take my mouse and uh, show you the process. I can end up going from the edge of when the ball is starting to impact the force plate, and that is 0 0.2400, so I'll put that over here, 0 0.2400. I'll go to the other edge, and that's about 0 0.2560. Then I will, and it's a, it didn't quite get all the way down there, but that's the last data point that I have. I'll then go over to my stats, and it will tell me that my maximum is 296. I'll put that on here, 
296. And then it's got this wonderful integral function that I can just highlight and take the area under the curve. I'll get this part right here, right about there. And then I'll view the integral and that's 2.373. All right, so let me analyze all this data and I'll get right back with you. All right, I have all five of my trials loaded up here. And you'll remember I said it was like 0.204. It was actually 0.206 when I went back and looked where my initial time and uh, 0.220 for my final time. I simply subtract one from the other and I get my inflated ball time of 0 0.014, 14 milliseconds. Over five trials, that's what the average was. And then we end up having the completely deflated case. And on average, those cases turned out to be 0.017 or 17 milliseconds. What does this tell us? Well, it tells us the inflated ball is actually impacting for a shorter period of time than the completely deflated ball. Now, this is counterintuitive for some of the students. They're gonna end up rehashing many of these ideas. They're gonna say, wait a second, how is that possible? And then we'll remind them that we can also think of our force. And notice, on average, our force is much greater for the ball that bounces versus the ball that splats. 284 on average versus 575. But what you can then do is end up saying, remember, we can take this integral, that is the area under the curve. That's gonna talk about our force and our time. And so when we look at this integral, on average, we get 3.5 for the ball that bounces, and for the deflated, 2.3. So let's remember that ratio. Let's just take our three point, or better yet, 2.3 divided by our 3.5, and that's about 0.65. Remember that number, because we're gonna end up talking about the rest of the data with the integration if you don't have a technology or a tool that's gonna allow you to do this. I'm gonna show you an old school technique. Let me click over to all of the data. I downloaded all of the data from the Vernier system. And there's lots and lots of this data. I'm just gonna use the last drop of the inflated and the last drop of the, de the deflated. I can see my times here starting at 0.244, ending at 2.54. And you can see when I start to get positive values on that scale. So this is for the inflated case. You'll notice that I have a very sharp spike up. Notice zero to 600, and I'm gonna end up having my entire half a second of data. When I do that with the deflated case, also 0.5 total seconds, and you'll see that I end up going from zero to 600, but I peak at about 300, about half of what I did over here. Now, for each one of the graphs, I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna make sure that I go from zero to 600, zero to 600, and then 0.24 to 0.26, 0.24 to 0.26. Why am I doing that? Well, again, if you don't have a tool that can integrate for you, I can print these out. I've got my blue graph here, and I've got my orange graph. Now, what can I do? Because they're exactly the same scale, I can take each one of these, I could take a pair of scissors, and cut this out, as I've done here. And hopefully you can see this. I've already cut out a second copy right here. It fits on there just perfectly. Now I take this, cut my other one out for the deflated case. So I've got my inflated, and you'll notice the force is gonna be great, right, compared to the deflated case, but you can also see the deflated case has a little bit more time. That is the x-axis. What I can do with this to help me integrate, I can use a little butterfly scale. And these butterfly scales go down to 0 0.01 grams. I'll put that down right here. Turn it on. I'll take the first one and I'll put this on here. And I get 0 0.42 grams. I'll take my other integral. That's essentially what I have. I've got my time times my force, my Newton second, put this one on here, 0.42, and this one is 0.26. Let me take that in here, 
0.26 divided by my 0.42, and lo and behold, 0.62. They're nearly the same. So the new technology of integrating on a computer is very similar to integrating by cutting out your graphs as a piece of paper and weighing them on a scale. And remember, we could weigh things very accurately for a long time, but to have this technology of the computer integrating for you, boy, that's new. That's really awesome. So a really neat old school way of integrating by using the weight of the paper, as long as you graph them with the axis being identical, this works out pretty well. What a neat technique. All right, we did a little bit more than we expected, but that's your quiz for today. Thank you for watching another Idealized Science Institute video. We are a nonprofit organization. If you like what you've seen, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want, leave a comment below. It's helpful to us. If you can financially support us, go to our website and hit the donate button. If you can't, simply by sharing these videos with other teachers and students in your life will be helpful. While at our website, you'll find that we have our Idealized Science Institute book, That'll help you engage your students in dialogic discourse. There you'll also find we have a podcast where we break down educational research. We also have long form lessons. If you're a teacher, you can watch these and go in the very next day and enact these. Along with this, we also have many other resources, including more quick quizzes. So thank you for watching and we hope to see you in the next one.